Hello my loves, welcome back to my channel, or welcome to my channel if you are new here. Hi, hello, my name is Loie. Yes, you read the title correctly. Today, we are taking a look at 50, 5, 0, 50 TikToks from the haunted side of TikTok. How are you all doing? I love to use these videos as a bit of a catch up between you and I, but it's been a while since we've been able to chat like this. And if you're wondering where I've been, I know there was no new video last week and no stream. Basically, I had a bit of a medical pet emergency with my senior dog. He is 13 years old. I had to spend a few nights at the emergency vet with him, so I hope you'll forgive me for going a little MIA on ya. Not my intention, but my sweet guy, I guess really our sweet guy because you guys are my besties, so you have like honorary pet parent status. Um, our sweet guy's getting all the love and cuddles and meds and good food that he needs to get better. Go, Riley, go. Before we get into our TikToks, I wanna thank the sponsor of today's video, me. I have two really cool platforms where I post extra content. One is YouTube, actually. I post under my YouTube channel memberships. My channel members get extra members exclusive content, diary entries written by yours truly, members only updates, access to like my private Instagram stories, and just so much more. I basically use it as a personal little hub just to share extra stuff. If you'd like to join my channel memberships, the join button should be right under this video next to the subscribe button. Button. If you can't access it on mobile, you may have to check it out from your desktop. The second place is my fan house. I used to have a Patreon back in the day, and my fan house is basically my new Patreon. I like the fan house platform better, and people who have used it say they also like it better, so that's why the switch. And I'm on my fan house all day, every day. It's my favorite platform to be able to connect kind of one-on-one -on -one with you guys. I do like themed photo and video sets over there. I do cosplay sometimes. I also offer custom content. So if you want to join fan house, House, I'll have the link down below for you. And thank you all, as always, for your support. I appreciate and love you more than I could ever say. Without any further ado, let's get into the TikToks. I hope you've all gotten your drink and your snack and you're settled in, because now we're diving into 50 TikToks from the haunted side of TikTok together. And the first TikTok that we're taking a look at is from Metaphysical Show, who shares an incredibly eerie paranormal story with us. I'm at a horse stable right now, as, as you can see. And the other day I was walking over here to see a guy who worked in the land. He works in the horse stable. Anytime I see a guy working the land, I, I always get curious, ask them questions. I'll ask, you know, have you ever seen anything interesting out here? And, and oftentimes they'll say like, oh yeah, you know, I've seen some coyotes. Or, and so finally, you know, as the conversation was warming up, I say, hey, you know, have you ever seen anything out here you can't explain? The moment I said that, his eyes lit up. He was like, it's really weird you asked me that question. He's like, just last week, my buddy took the craziest video back in these woods. He pulls up his buddy's private Facebook page. So it's a private Facebook page. He tried to send me a link to the video. I couldn't see the video on my own phone. So I, I had to pull the video up on his phone and take a video of it. Before the person walks by, you see this dog on like super high alert. Then we see the figure. To me, that looks like a ghost. Like I just, what else could it possibly be? Like what is semi paranormal and walking through the woods? This is not a math question. It's just a question of what reality are we on where that's not a ghost. The person who filmed that video, by the way, the person who originally saw that happen, yeah, they won't even come back to the stable, let alone go into the woods. Now, what's super weird about that video is the guy who took the video won't even go back into those woods anymore. Did you see the dog in the video? That dog was growling and it was looking over into the area where the apparition appears. And it was just, what a crazy video. I, could, I just still, I can't believe it. And I haven't been able to figure out what's going on. I mean, what do you guys think? So I think it's safe to say that whatever this is, and you know that I personally think it's paranormal Normal, but I'm always happy to hear what you think. Whatever it is, it was freaky enough to make a grown man flee from the scene. The next few TikToks that we have come from Jay or Sinister. Now, these are a fascinating series of videos on a doll that Jay keeps in like a glass box. At first, we don't know anything about the doll. The first video that I saw was just a viral clip of Jay basically saying he had seen it moving. I think 
I think I can see it on here. Hold on. Now it's done. Oh, wait, there it is. See if she moves. There it is. So the poster, Jay, has been hearing the doll basically start to play music on and off. And it's one of those dolls that like you wind it up and then it's supposed to kind of like tilt and bend with the music. So the only way to get it to play music is by winding it up. However, as we learn in following videos, this doll is not ever touched or tampered with. I got her about two years ago at a thrift store. There were three of them and for whatever reason she was uh, very far away from the other ones and for some reason I just really wanted this one She's very cool. I really love the jester style. It's cool I don't know if she's ever been opened, but I've never opened the box. It's taped closed and um yeah, I just left her there. It's kind of cool. So Jay explains that there were three of this exact same doll at the thrift store. However, he felt really drawn to this one and it was also coincidentally kind of placed far away from its equals. And Jay says here that while he felt really drawn to her, he felt like he wanted to bring her home, she's never been out of that box. So why is she playing music? With a newfound, absolutely captivated audience who is just so interested in the seemingly haunted doll story, Jay makes another video. I'm going to do one more video on the doll. All uh, right then. After this, I'm going to, everyone wants it recorded overnight, so I'm going to record it overnight, and then I will upload it if anything happens. If not, there won't be another video. I am going to open it, uh, and I'll do it on here so you all can see. Other than that, um, yeah, this will be this video, and then one more, and then I'm done on the uh, doll stuff. Sorry. It's not my main interest. Everyone just seems to want it. And curiosity really must have gotten to him, because he chose to open the box that the doll resided within. There. Stare into it. Stare. Okay, y'all can see, it's out of the box. It's got a little stand, still wrapped feet. That's what it looks like on the back. Keys right here. It is all the way pushed. If I push it, it'll keep going because that's how they work. So he unboxes her. The entire comment section is going nuts. Like, why have you taken her out of the box? This is exactly what you don't do in the horror movie. Everyone's asking questions. Everyone wants to know, is this thing acting up? Are you having crazy activity? Like, what is going on, Jay? I want to emphasize here, by the way, I have not said this yet. Jay is like a Magic the Gathering creator. This is not Jay's content. Jay is not talking about dolls. Jay does not like own dolls or talk about hauntings or anything like that. So I'm sure he's caught off guard by the amount of attention this is getting. Despite that, he actually takes the time to set up a camera and he films this doll throughout the night into a following day to see if like now that she's been unboxed, if anything is going to happen. To briefly summarize the findings, Jay did say that like at one point the camera cut off and I think that was just due to like a mandatory filming cutoff time. And when he came to uh, restart it, he noticed in the footage that the doll had moved slightly and he thinks this could be his wife, his son, the cat. He's not necessarily chalking that up to something paranormal. His camera also so interestingly fell in the middle of the night as it was supposed to be recording this doll. Now, and, ag and again here, he kind of takes the stance of a realist and says, you know, like this could have been anything. It wasn't that stable. Maybe it just fell over. But really, Jay said he didn't want to make any more videos on the doll at this point. Haunted content isn't exactly in his repertoire. And while he thought this was all really interesting and entertaining, he doesn't really want to keep going with it. Whether it is in hopes of not messing with this or he just doesn't believe in it, we don't really know. But we do get to see at the end of this video, the doll do her little song and dance.
And I don't know if it's just me, but after seeing that and envisioning it, doing it inside of the box that it was residing in in the middle of the night, that little song and dance, it makes you just a bit more creeped out. Next up, we have a TikTok from the user Creature Beach. This poster, named Hannah, has had some pretty bizarre paranormal experiences that she's explaining in this video at the start. What I'm about to tell you is not a story and it's not a horror short film. This is actually happening. Lately, I've been seeing stuff, particularly in my hallway. My hallway is right over there. Right here, when I'm laying in bed. <laughs> I'll see stuff like zooming through from the hallway into the living room like boom 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 But for some reason it doesn't bother me Come to find out the other day that my fiance has been seeing me when I am not there Just the other night we were playing Call of Duty together He was in the bedroom, I was in the living room and I saw something walking the hallway towards the kitchen I thought it was him and I told him about it and he told me that he just saw me peeking around the corner looking at him in that same exact spot I just showed you. To make it worse, the next day I was here by myself in the living room, I heard his guitar being plucked. And he was just playing it the night before. To make things even weirder, when we first moved in this house, we were both seeing something small and white, like a dog. We both saw it at the same time. We were like, oh, did you see that? Dashing under the coffee table. My dad and brother experienced a very similar phenomenon to this when they first moved into our house, like the house that my brother and I now own in Georgia. And it freaks me out to this day. It's one of the scariest things I've ever heard of. And this story gave me the same chills that theirs did. I hope they get to the bottom of whatever this thing is. And to me, it sounds like a mimic or just something trying to mimic each of them, to fool them, maybe get them to follow it from room to room. So maybe you have seen this trend going around if you love the spooky and the scary stuff like yours truly. It's essentially this like eerie foghorn sound or something like that that plays out and then people end up putting over the sound stories of really scary things that have happened to them. You'll understand when I show it. We have a few examples of this later as well. But for now, this video is from Isabel. She posted a video to this sound and it says in the caption, looking at the picture of the ocean that I took on my 100 year old camera, even though I was taking photos of the mountains. For a bit of context, I did some digging here. The camera is about 117 years old and our poster has lovingly named the camera Clarence. It's clear that she has such an affinity for this camera and that it's really special to her. But she also said she's always treated Clarence as if he was a little bit haunted. Now in the next video, she shows us the photos that she took on that camera. And it is just like, chilling when you see the one that's out of place. You might think that maybe this is a trick of the camera or that the film was bad, and she explains it a bit more in this video, but there's something so unsettling, I'm sure, about taking a photo and then looking back and it's not the photo that you took. It's not even where you were. So what happened is I went to the mountains, I went up the Kankamangas, I used some expired like Russian film. But anyways, I loaded it in and took it out like that day. I was testing this camera to try to restore it. So I was getting a lot like these where you can clearly see trees. Most of them are just trees. Um, I thought it would look cool. I don't know where this texture came from. It's just an old roll. This is the one that freaked me out because you can clearly see like water like here and just like, darkness and I'm not really sure like what's going on with that so I was like I literally I was trying to remember like was I even by a lake like did I even like go near the ocean did I use this roll because I was so confused when I developed this and this came out and this is like the one odd one the other ones look just like that other one maybe variations of colors and different trees but like or like sometimes like a mountain shape but like there was literally no water like you can very clearly see <laughs> like water, I don't know why, but I just thought it was freaky. Like that's just a water source. It's a lake, it's an ocean, it's something. And it's something our poster says she never ran into on the day that she went for that hike. 
Our next video is so freaking creepy and it's one of my favorites that we're talking about today. It comes from TikToker J Rob IV. And Jay was just hanging out with his friends one night. They're streaming. They're talking about sports. We're not doing a paranormal podcast. We're not doing a ghost hunting podcast. And yet, they had an unexpected fifth wheel in this conversation uh, that could not be explained. I don't know. It might be time for him to go as well. You never really know. So I, I say you just build off of those people. Was that a ghost? I, I just go. personally. Oh, yo, Junebug, chill out. Yo, that <laughs> wasn't even a person. I, I say you just build off of those people. Was that a ghost? I, I just go. personally. Oh, yo, Junebug, chill out. You can literally see this person like lagging as they walk through this room, as though the camera is like struggling to pick up the footage of them. Chris also looks over his shoulder, almost like he's noticing something right before Jay calls out, like, hey, we just saw something in your camera footage. And I have two kind of problems with this being explained away as just a person. One is that this group seems like they probably stream fairly regularly. They all seem really comfortable. They all have setups for it. Wouldn't someone walking through knowing they might be on camera like say something or excuse themselves or you know kind of like almost like duck their head like that's my instinct is if there's a camera and I don't want to be on camera you know you duck your head to try to get out of the way. While I guess the lagging thing could just be the webcam not working very well, Chris looks really crisp and clear in this image and he also has a light source. A lot of webcams are also pretty high tech these days and that looks like a semi-translucent person. I don't know y'all, it seems paranormal to me, but what do you think? Side note, I watched the follow-up videos on this, but like Chris seems really freaked out. After it happened, he turned on all the lights in the room and genuinely seemed so weirded out by the whole thing. So take that for what you will. J-Rob, no, J-Rob, what was this? <laughs> what the f did y'all see? I'm not playing no more. Nah, nah, J Rob, boy, what uh, so you just agreed know, on? That, that look like you might got a ghost, bro. Bro, I'm chill out, bro. From Little and Large 13, we have just like a quick little video here. Basically, it's like security footage, as if there's a security camera on the outside of a house. In the footage, a woman is getting out of her car, heading into her house. When you notice something is crawling around the back of her car and trying its best to stay hidden from sight. Now the woman doesn't notice this and at first you might think it was like a dog or something. Zooming in on the dog itself reveals it's not a dog, um, unfortunately. It is a person with like pigtails or something to make it look like they have dog ears. And I have to believe that this is staged because if it's not, why would anyone be crawling around someone's car like that? They look so creepy. I don't wanna believe anybody's doing that because I cannot have a new fear unlocked for it. Our next video comes from poster Dark Moose Man, though I'm unsure of the original origins and I am interested to know because this was so weird. Our poster takes a moment to set up this video and explain that a security guard was seen on camera having a conversation with someone who isn't there. And when the dispatcher watching asks the security guard, like, who are you talking to? The security officer says something disturbing. Who is he talking to? Dispatch to 329. <laughs> yes, sir. Who are you talking to? Are you sure you're saying Miss Abigail? Like, she's been passed on for two years now. Miss Abigail is, she, she died two years ago. You mean you can't see the person I'm talking to? No, there's nobody in front of you at all. So our security officer says that they're talking to Miss Abigail, but according to the other person on the radio, Miss Abigail, who was a frequent visitor, died two years ago. Whether it's a hoax or not, that clip gave me chills. You guys tagged me in the next TikTok so many times, and it was a response to someone asking the question, what is the creepiest thing your kid has ever said? And this video comes from Caitlin at Five Kids, who talks about a bizarre experience she had with her daughter's dollhouse. When my daughter was three, she came in my room in the middle of the night, woke me up and said, mommy, can you please Please get the little girl out of my room. And I'm a half, I'm a, like, sleeping. I'm like, 
What well, little girl? She's like the little girl. She's jumping on my bed. She wants to play with me. She won't get out of my room. I'm like, oh, just sleep with me. So she slept with me. The next day, I didn't think anything of it. Then she comes to me and says, I'm so sick of daddy moving my toys around in my dollhouse. He comes in my room and plays with my dollhouse and moves them all around. I'm like, I highly doubt your father's doing that. He probably banged into it by accident, making your bed or something. Um, this went on for uh, pretty much every morning. Somebody's rearranging my dollhouse. Didn't think anything of it at all. The only reason I thought of it was because one night me and my husband come in from outside and our oldest daughter comes and says, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, mom, dad, the freakiest thing just happened. And we're like, what? And she's like, I came downstairs and Jen was in the kitchen. And then I see her walk by. So I walk to follow her in her room to see if she's okay. And I see her in her bed sleeping, but she was just walking. So I wanted to make sure that she wasn't tricking me. So, you know, I tried to wake her up, but she was sleeping. She wasn't joking. I think I saw a ghost. And I'm like, oh, crap. Oh, crap. Jennifer said there was a little girl in her room. I wonder, you know. So the next day I say to Jennifer, Jennifer, what does the little girl look like? And she said, she has long blonde hair, blue eyes, and she's white. She looks like me. Okay, because my daughter had long blonde hair, blue eyes. And I said, is she your age? And she said, no, she's younger than me. She's probably two or three. Now my daughter was four, maybe four and a half. Um, so I'm like, holy crap. So, you know, I'm on the phone with my mom and my sisters and I'm like, I'm freaking out. And I'm like, what the hell do I do? You know, it, it, uh. and my sister reminds me, I trash picked that damn dollhouse like right when this whole thing started going. So after the reveal of this, it seems to me that Caitlin really, really believes that there is like something attached to this dollhouse. After all, of course, her daughter is talking about the furniture being moved around and nobody was experiencing any kind of activity until after the dollhouse was brought into their home. Alarmingly, and I'm unsure why, Caitlin decides to burn the dollhouse in hopes that that will get rid of whatever entity this is that her kids have kind of been seeing. And this results in such a bizarre coincidence. It's absolutely insane. And then maybe six months later, my daughter comes to me and says, oh my gosh, mom, we burned that little girl's dollhouse and then she burned our house down because we were living in a hotel because our whole entire house burned down coincidence or creepy creepy crawly i have no idea like is that not the craziest thing you've ever heard in your entire life that they burned that doll house in hopes of breaking this attachment and their house burns down i listen listen i know accidents happen but what the heck are the odds? Our next TikTok comes from unknown rail fan 1373, who posted a video of a mystery like ghost train going down a track with no conductor and no passengers. Well, that's what our poster thinks anyway. When this train goes past him, I want you to take a very, very close look at the back car of the train. Ah. Uh. Oh boy. What the? Uh... Well, that ain't good. Don't know who's running that, but I mean, yeah, okay. I don't know what that thing is, but maybe it's a good thing that the original poster didn't see it because if I were him, I would have just floored it. And I'm talking floored it until I was as far away from that as humanly possible. So maybe he saved himself a car accident. Whatever that thing is, it's hiding on purpose. It's like hiding so the poster wouldn't see it. And the fact that it feels the need to hide makes me so uncomfortable. Like, what was that? I don't know. I don't know, but it freaked me out. Clearly, whoever or whatever that was was hiding in the back in hopes of getting a good look at the person in the car without being seen themselves. And that alone is so unsettling. Our next TikTok comes from Foul Mitten Outdoors, who posts quite regularly about his love for the outdoors and just various things about how he sort of seemingly lives in the middle of nowhere and really loves it, really loves to connect with nature. It has unfortunately brought along what seems to be a cryptid 
or something of the like. In the first video that I want to talk about from this poster, he says that his wife woke him up in the middle of the night to tell him that she could hear something on the roof, and he is going to investigate when this TikTok starts. Well, she just woke me up again and uh, said she heard it on the roof, and this time so did I, so you can get out there and have a look. Okay. Oh, damn. Holy sh All right. So a bitch is one on the other side of the house. What the hell? Where'd it go? What is that? What the son of a... What's going on here? Oh my god. So many people point out that this could obviously just be like a raccoon or something that our poster sees in the dark. And that is quickly debunked by the carcass that is seen on the roof at the end. But it's not even like a carcass, it's like it's just bones. So other people are thinking maybe it's a mountain lion because a mountain lion could have all of those bones and like carry it up to a rooftop. But again, the bones are like clean and I don't know if a mountain lion would be running around with just like a set of bones. And here's the thing, this is not the first time that whoever or whatever this thing is has brought our poster bones. There's another video that begins in quite a similar way to our last one where the poster shows something else that was strange that was left on their doorstep. Our poster mentions a gifting rock, and if you're wondering what the gifting rock is, essentially the poster says this is where he will leave gifts, things like chalk or other offerings, I guess, and receiving items in exchange for them. In the video I'm about to show you, these gifts included like a little wreath made out of vines and leaves, as well as two feathers crossed on top of each other. I'm not real superstitious, but that's, that's not good. Structures, they've remained the same. I swear they're always watching. Anyway, guys, I didn't bring a gift to leave in return. I forgot it this morning. So this one time, I'm not going to leave anything. And uh, we'll see what happens. To recap for you at this point, we have Creature in the Woods. We have Creature in the Woods bringing bones which is weird in itself, but now also other mysterious offerings. If you're anything like me, you might be wondering to yourself, well, have they ever actually like seen this thing? Like seen it, seen it? And the answer to that would be an absolutely horrifying yes. They're all over the damn place again tonight. Okay, I'm gonna keep walking towards it. Might actually get to capture something here. All right, whatever you are, you need to leave. Stay out of this place. This is our home. You need to leave. You leave now. gonna come around for a little bit. I think that'll keep it away for a while. In this video, the poster can be seen calling out to something in the woods and we catch a glimpse of it. Something that looks human, but also not really. Shortly before I made this video, when I was still getting together all of my TikToks, I went to the poster's page to see if there were any updates. As it turns out, he had posted a clip of something that literally may have started all of this. While cleaning out a crawl space, our poster comes across a jar of what can only be described as ash and bone, and he decides to 
open it. The caption of this video reads, is this what brought the creature here? And then below the video reads, could this be what started it all? And I think the easy answer is just yes. Whether this is staged or real or somewhere in between, I think that the moment that he opened that jar, his fate was sealed and chaos was due to unravel on his TikTok whenever this thing was unleashed. There are so many fascinating videos about this on Fowl's account and I highly recommend you check it out. The next few videos I have to share with you all are from Tanner J. Shelton. Can't believe I've not only never talked about this, but really just never even heard of it because these TikToks were posted in 2019 and really have just started kind of taking a viral turn. The first video kicks off with Tanner saying that he is babysitting late one night when he notices something on the baby monitor. So I'm babysitting, right? And it's 10.30 at night now. I've already put the kids in bed and I hear laughing. I started to get a little mad because this was the third time I told them they needed to be in bed since they have school in the morning. The thing is the noises were coming from the baby's room. I thought maybe they woke up to check on their sister. So then I decide to check the baby monitor. Please tell me what's in the top left corner. While showing us footage of the baby monitor, Tanner notices what looks as if it's a person or a humanoid figure next to the crib with like its arms through the slats, reaching for the baby when the video cuts off. Tanner gives an update about this in his next video, which was posted only two days after the first. And pay attention to the background. All right, here's an update on my last TikTok. Okay, so I ran upstairs to check on the baby and she was fine. I didn't tell the parents because I didn't want them to think I was crazy. And I'm not a superstitious person, but ever since then, I felt off. Whatever's behind Tanner looks a lot like Samara from the frickin' ring. She has this long black hair covering her face and it's an intentionally quite scary sight. So what is this following Tanner? Because that doesn't look like what we saw beside the crib at all. Alarmingly, in the next video, Tanner says that the baby that he was babysitting is now missing. And it seems like his original video is now being used as evidence in a missing persons investigation. So a few days after the first video, the parents actually called me and told me that something happened to the baby. I decided to go ahead and show them the video. Then this article was posted today at two. It says infant abducted from local home with shocking video. It then goes into detail about how officials were called to the Charlotte home at around 6 a.m. Everyone seems to think that that thing in the video was a person, but I can't shake the feeling that something supernatural is going on here. But in any case, I'll keep you updated. Now is probably a good time to say something I'm sure most of you have already figured out, and that is that this is a haunting story. There's no evidence to prove that the article that Tanner showed us was real, and given what goes on to happen, if it was real, we would have heard something about it by now. And while this may appear to be your run-of-the-mill, scary story, haunting story, I think you are going to be shocked by what ends up happening. In videos that follow, it seems as though Tanner is literally being stalked by the girl that we saw in the background in his original updates. Hey guys, so I decided to just get out of the house today. I think it's probably good for me to keep my mind off of things and just maybe not think about it so much. Tanner says he feels safest in his home, but he's trying to keep busy to keep his mind off of things. Technically, the next clip I'm about to show you is a YouTube video, and I don't know if this was all originally uploaded to Tanner's TikTok at one point, but I think that it kind of helps to fill in the gaps that the rest of his TikToks may leave. Tanner says that he's been looking into missing children in his local area after just feeling really shaken by what happened with the kid that he was babysitting, and he stumbled upon the legend of the Charlotte which. So I kind of stumbled upon this page when I was looking for abductions in the Charlotte area. And I found this website. It's interesting to say the least. And after reading through it, I th think it kind of explains 
the woman showing up in my videos. This is a real website, thecharlottewitch.com, and tells the story of a young girl named Charlotte Abernathy. Charlotte was born in the 1700s and had a fairly difficult life according to the few details that we knew about her. Perhaps that is why she haunts the earth now, abducting young girls from their homes. Each victim mentioned on the website also has like a brief summary of how people assume Charlotte's ghost came to abduct them. However, I think the story of Kimberly Briggs is the most interesting one on the website. Kimberly Briggs was born on April 2nd, 1974, into a loving family. She had an older brother who loved her very much. She was the sweetest, most beautiful baby to ever be on this earth. The day she left us, the world became bleak. Why someone would ever take a baby from her home never made sense to me. For so many nights, I imagined her final hours, how scared she must have been. How cold and alone. With every account I find, I become more sure that Kim did not wander away. My parents had nothing to do with her disappearance. I know that now. I know the Charlotte witch is to blame. I saw her on the night my sister was taken. I did not understand then, but I am certain now. Her body was never found. So this website is run by a real family member of one of the Charlotte Witch's victims, which makes this all feel so much more real. These videos all went up in 2019, and it's quite possible that some things have just been taken down or lost a time, but it's a little difficult to piece together the remaining parts of this story. So I'm gonna be referencing another YouTube video on Tanner's account as we talk about the final three TikToks as well, just because again, I think it provides a little bit of extra context. In the YouTube video, Tanner has awoken in the middle of the night to what sounds like scratching on his window. The lights are not turning on in his home, and he looks for a flashlight, but realizes pretty quickly something is very, very wrong. As Tanner is walking through his house, trying to turn on lights, trying to see what that noise was, we can see in the window at one point in the video what looks like a girl standing outside and smiling in at us. Tanner seems not to have noticed this, and he himself heads outside as well. A noise startles him and he tries to run back in, but the door is locked from the inside. And this is where the first of our last three TikToks from Tanner begin. As Tanner is walking through, you can see various objects on the floor, like baby dolls and toys that seem like they were just cast aside. And then a kid's toy goes off in the dark all by itself. And Tanner goes to turn it off. I just moved. But if we head back to the TikTok, we have a clip of Tanner laying on the ground while a girl in a white dress can be seen walking around him, who we now can probably safely assume was always Charlotte Abernathy. While that clip was never explained, there are videos of Tanner on his YouTube channel almost being filmed while he sleeps, so it could be assumed that he passed out and then the Charlotte witch herself filmed him. Now in the final clip, Tanner can be seen running around his house, 
calling for someone named Millie. No. Millie! Millie! Millie. Again, if a longer video for this ever existed, it's not there anymore. But if we piece together what Tanner has told us about his life and what we've also seen about it, there are kids' toys throughout his home. We saw him turn off one in the last video. He's also babysitting. He's probably familiar with kids. And Millie sounds like a girl's name. We know that the Charlotte Witch is only taking young girls. So I think that Tanner's story ended when his little sister was taken by the very Charlotte Witch that he was investigating the entire time. I told you, you would be shocked by the amount of detail in this. It's crazy to me that four years later, we've never had another update, never even seen Tanner again online, but I still think this was an absolutely fascinating, scary side of TikTok story, and really kind of threw me back to our early days, our like first ever days of talking about haunted and spooky TikToks. It's my hope that one day maybe Tanner will come back and finish the story, but what did you think of it? I, again, just thought it was so incredibly detailed, and honestly, by the end, I was starting to get pretty freaked out by it all. Okay, remember the TikToks we talked about with the photographer and seeing like an ocean in her photos of the mountains? I told you guys that that sound that she made the video to had been kind of like going around on TikTok and people had been sharing their scariest stories. When I decided I wanted to make a video like this big with 50 haunted TikToks, I felt like maybe we could share a couple of stories that came out of that trend. This one is from Jose F. Haas 3, who works as an EMT. In his story, he says, when you come back to find another patient has decided to hook themselves up to the monitor. And when he flips the camera around, we see that the heart rate monitor inside of his ambulance is going off as though it's detecting someone's heartbeat. There are so many different kinds of this story as well, from EMTs to military personnel. This one is from Mandatory Fun Day, who said, waking up in the field and seeing a dude in digital camo asking me if I'm ready for the invasion. He's missing an arm. Then under the video, the caption reads, no sleep for 72 hours will make you hallucinate. Yeah, hallucinate. I've heard many a story about a haunted military base, and it does not surprise me. There were a lot of haunted military, like, base stories in this trend as well. Another one comes from Jason, or that druid guy, V2, who says, when you're on duty and a Marine in full kit asks if you've seen his rifle, his vest is from early Iraq and torn to shreds. His ribs are visible. Nurses also got in on the storytelling. This video is from bitjohn underscore WDE, who said, me seeing my patient sitting in the recliner in their room, even though they passed. And we took the body to the morgue two hours ago. Now, my favorite story that came out of this trend is from a video that comes from Blair Hart on TikTok, who said, working overnights in a mortuary, when a woman approaches the front desk, asking if we have her husband. The scariest part of this was the text underneath that read that she was missing the top of her head and her jaw was severed. So this woman is working the front desk at a mortuary one night and sees a woman walk in who very, very clearly should not be standing upright asking about her husband. Now, some of you may just think this is a disturbing story, something somebody said uh, in order to be creepy, but it's real. And Blair followed up with the full story. So number one, um, I was a mortuary assistant and yeah, I worked the front desk sometimes. So just a little bit about it. It was probably eight or nine o'clock at night. Um, I was sitting at the front desk we had just got back from a decedent call, um, which a decedent call is basically where you go and pick up, you know, somebody who's... <clears throat> um, we had just gotten back from a decedent call, um, hanging out at the front desk, and our, our doors made a little, like, doo-doo sound whenever they opened. So, you know, I'm sitting there and I hear doo-doo, and my back is facing the front counter, because I was, um, what was I doing? I was doing something with the copier. And I turn back around, and I see what looks like a lady missing 
up here and this part of her jaw just kind of hanging off. Um, very clearly spoken, uh, hello, do you have my husband? Um, and I was frozen, to say the least. Here's a little reenactment. Hello, do you have my husband? And by the time that I blinked, she was gone. Um, so I did a little bit of digging. I spoke with my ex-coworker. Um, she was deceased. She was one of the decedents that we had currently there um, in what we called the fridge. <laughs> you can call it whatever you want. It's kind of morbid. Um, and none of us are really sure um, how she died other than we know it was something traumatic. We do remember that, um, that it was something pretty traumatic how she passed away. While Blair says that she's unsure of what exactly it was that she experienced that night, she knows that she saw something. That woman that she saw was one of the deceased that they had in their mortuary that night. To make this worse, by the way, because I could not stop looking into this after that, I was so creeped out. Someone asked in the questions, well, was her husband there? And the answer was no, her husband was not deceased. But he did come to the mortuary to plan his wife's funeral. And that just gave me chills. Again, Blair is unsure of what she saw that night. Could it have been sleep deprivation? Probably. But I can't shake the feeling that this could be paranormal. And if it is, there is nothing that has ever freaked me out more. Okay, so I said I wasn't going to talk about the Martina Minaj account anymore. Um, just because I think that the videos are very obviously staged, which is completely fine. Like there's a reason that those videos exist and they just entertain people and creep people out. But there's also no like through line in the haunting. So for me, it's not that interesting to share with you. But I really needed a bit of um, relief after that last story because it was so freaky. So here is a video of Martina's kitchen um, where one of her kids comes into it and the ghost is playing with eggs. The ghost is just in the kitchen, like hurling eggs around. And then at the very end of the clip, you can see that one of the eggs is just like floating in the air. And the kids, absolutely phenomenal acting cracked me up. The egg floating cracked me up. The idea that an egg ghost exists, a ghost who just takes all its fury out on eggs cracked me up and I really needed that after the last video. How are we doing? We doing okay? Are we doing all right? My battery pack and micro almost dead because we've been doing this for 30 something TikToks at this point. So I'm gonna charge those and if you see me looking a little different, that's why. Our next video comes from TikToker, hello, it's Re. And if you have a pet, you probably believe that your pet can sense things and sometimes just know things are there long before you ever do. And that seems to be the case with this poster's dog, who began to growl at something that the poster couldn't see. This poster's dog seems very clearly freaked out by something like he's shaking, he's freaking out. I've never seen one of my dogs that nervous and I can imagine I probably would also film it if I had had something like that happen, but you can literally see like there's nothing in the room with them. The next video is a repost of a TikTok by PG Stories Official and I'm unsure of the original poster's name, but the video is captioned, Home Alone Making TikToks and a mysterious light appears in my room. As this woman is making TikToks, sure enough, you can see a weird light behind her. Now, I've zoomed in on this, and to me, it kind of looks like it could be a car going past a window, because there's like a little light under that orb of light in the room as well. But if that's not a window, and that's not what happened, I have no idea what that could be. Next up is a video from The Void 402 who posted the following footage of like a priest at a church trying to film videos about upcoming services and just happenings at the church and whatever. And as this priest is trying to film this, there's like something going on in the background. Well, hey everybody, Pastor Aaron here. It's my pleasure just to announce that we this Sunday will be, oh, will be uh, open. Okay, we're, we're, uh, we've been trying to do this announcement several times today already and uh, three times that podium back there has fallen over on its own. It's uh, kind of like... 
that uh, podium has been wobbling. Okay, so there's, we checked the vent. There's a vent there that is not an air duct that has any forced air at all. So it can't be wobbling from that. Um, there's absolutely no breeze in here. You can see by the banner there. There's this, no, no air conditioning. It's these things, they're off. Let's see if it does it again. Ooh, that thing's moving. That hasn't been moving. That's new. Whatever this thing is causing all this commotion in the church, maybe it just doesn't want its Sunday ruined by noisy and excitable churchgoers. But that doesn't mean it should be given this priest that hard of a time. Then we have another video from PG Stories Official, this time of a young child who is telling her mom all about her previous life as a pirate. I wish I could be a pirate again. You do? Yeah. When were you a pirate? I was a long time ago when you were alive and then I shrunk into a little kid. And I never could get a, be a pirate again. Now kids have big imaginations, and I know that, but this story supposedly takes place before this child's mother is ever even alive. And with this child's story in particular, it was so specific all of the things that she told her mom, and yes, while she could absolutely just be pretending that she was once a pirate, it really seems like she believes it. I so seriously believe every single past life story that a kid ends up telling. I feel like you hear the most interesting life stories from children who know details about stuff that they absolutely should not. And it's the most eerie and unsettling and magical feeling, I think, for adults who I guess like reasonably we should know better, like we should know that these kids just maybe picked up the information that they're telling us somewhere else and they have an active imagination, but it still always weirds me out and I always end up believing the kids who tell these stories. So I kind of went on a bit of a hunt to see if I could find any other past life stories. One of my favorite stories about like past lives that I found on TikTok comes from Melanie Sergal Zero, who is the mother of her young son. And one day, as Melanie is talking to her son, and for a bit of preface here, Melanie's father passed away. Her son tells Melanie something fascinating about a grandfather who he never met. What did you just say about my daddy? Uh, I was your daddy. daddy. What? I was your daddy. You were my daddy? Yeah. Oh. So, your daddy turned into a kid. So, he didn't die. He didn't die? Nope. Oh, he, he turned was... into Oliver? Yeah. <laughs> 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 and I thought this was the sweetest video for a myriad of reasons. Of course, I blurred this child's face in this video, but the way he looks at his mom with so much love and adoration in the original video is just so freaking sweet. But also, he's so sure that he is her dad. Like, don't be silly. Your dad's right here. I'm just your kid now. And honestly, it was really touching and really, really, really sweet. And just what a fascinating moment. This kid gets his point across that his mama doesn't need to be sad because he is right there. And I think no matter what, that's the sweetest thing ever. Speaking of kids and ghosts, I also believe every time that a kid ends up saying that they can see something that we cannot. And I think that in this video that's from Real Horror Talk, it basically starts off like a cute Snapchat story, like a mom recording her son for a Snapchat story until the young boy begins to have a conversation with somebody who is not there. Jeez. 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 <laughs> what you doing? What you see? What? What you see? Uh-uh, who are you saying hi to? Who are you saying hi to? Dude, you need to stop that. You're freaking me out. Come on. As the mom is just trying to take this video, her kid walks away and starts talking to Paw Paw. Now, again, big imaginations in children, but is it possible that this child had a visit from a loved one that the mother maybe could not see herself? My ears just started ringing as I said that. 
so I'm gonna say yes. His mom also seems horrified when this happens, which makes me think it's like not a regular occurrence. Like this kid is not walking around talking to a pawpaw all the time. Another video from PG Stories Official. This one is captioned, your first day at work and this happens. It features someone sitting down behind a cash register, just kind of drumming on their legs, hanging out as though they're waiting for a customer to come in when suddenly something happens. The cash register swings wide open all on its own. And the person, the employee working there, kind of takes a minute and like looks at the camera as if to be like, are you seeing what I'm seeing? Before finally getting up to go and close it. There's no additional information on this, so it could just be a glitch of this machine, but it would be a creepy thing to experience. And going back to the caption, if that was my first day on the job, I don't know if I'd come back for day two. Our next video comes from the TikTok poster Repairman67, who starts this off by saying, we live in a very old house. And I know what you're thinking, standard TikTok haunting, right? Not exactly, because this ghost in particular seems to be quite fond of tricks, card tricks. I don't even know how to start this off. We live in a very old house and weird shit happens every once in a while, you know? And there's been two other particular incidents very similar that have happened like this in the past. The first time a playing card shot out from underneath the stove and it looked like a particularly old playing card. The second time it happened, the same exact thing happened. A different playing card shot out from underneath it, like if somebody threw it out. And now this just shot out from underneath the washing machine. And if you take this picture and you put it in a negative filter, it looks eerily similar to our cat that passed away last year that's buried in the backyard. I don't know how to feel right now. So playing cards in the house will just shoot out from underneath of appliances and furniture. And it just seems like such a specifically bizarre thing to happen, especially at the end where Repairman talks about how this like inverted photo of his cat came shooting out, a cat that they had lost the year before. It definitely sounds like there's some kind of attachment within his house, and I don't know what the purpose of throwing these cards and pictures at him would be haunting in the form of scrapbooking maybe? Like, here's your supplies, go make my scrapbook for me. I can't, I'm dead, I, I don't get it. It's the only explanation, the only logical explanation. Moving on, a woman named Julie underscore Lunar went to TikTok to explain her terrifying experience with something at the Grand Canyon. I've personally never been to the Grand Canyon, but after hearing this story, I will certainly never stay after dark. So we were at the Grand Canyon and we decided to stay there to stargaze because the stars are amazing there. There's no light pollution. So we were sitting by the rim. We were sitting there in the dark and we couldn't see anything. And my boyfriend just had this awful feeling that something bad was going to happen. And that's not like him at all. He never feels like that. Even at night, he's not scared of the dark. He just had this awful feeling and we needed to go back to the car like right then. So we started walking back down the trail. It was about a 20 minute walk back to the car and pitch black through a bunch of trees. Out of nowhere, we heard a whistle behind us from the trees and there was nobody behind us. We pointed our flashlight at the trees because we thought maybe a person was hiding in there. Nobody was there. We decided to pick up our pace a little bit to get back to the car faster. So we eventually found the parking lot where our car was and we were walking towards our car and out of nowhere we heard this awful panting noise and it sounded like it was right in front of us we were pointing the flashlight everywhere there was nothing there we couldn't see anything and the noise it just sounded like it was like running at us we then like ran towards the visitor center so after we collected ourselves at the visitor center we just had to go back to the car because there was nobody around, nobody was there to help us, so we just had to run towards the car, that's all we could do. And we went back to the car, the noise was gone, there was nothing, and we are convinced that there was like something demonic or something there, I don't know. I'm really scared. This story is so deeply unnerving to me. What would have been whistling behind them, whistling with such clarity that they noticed it as a whistle, 
then subsequently panting really loudly behind them. What I think is interesting is that a lot of people have been talking about the whistler on TikTok. And we're gonna come back to this TikTok in a moment, but let's discuss what the whistler actually is. And I'm not gonna explain this to you, I'm going to allow the Twilight Emporium to do so. It's said that a giant, horrifying, evil spirit known as El Silbon, the whistler, walks the plains of South America, carrying the bones of his victims in a sack on his back. According to one version of the legend, El Silbon was a young man who caught his father abusing his beautiful young wife, and so out of anger, he killed his father. In retaliation for the death of his son, the boy's grandfather tied him to a pole and whipped him and tortured him and set dogs on him who chased him into the forest where he was cursed to carry the bones of his father on his back for all time. It's said that El Silbon is now a giant corpse-like monster who whistles a tune before he attacks. If the whistle sounds close, he's actually far away. But if it sounds far away, you're already dead. Seriously, should I just like get that guy to like narrate all my videos or do you guys want me to stick around like sometimes because seriously, it's a nice voice. I may or may not have fallen asleep to that TikTok a few nights ago. The reason I found this so interesting is what if, hypothetically, what Julie experienced in her video, remember Julie from the Grand Canyon, what if she experienced El Saban? And because noises that this entity makes um, are like kind of confusing, it's like the further it sounds, the closer closer it is, whereas the closer it sounds, the further away it is. Because these panting sounds and the whistling sounds sounded like they were right over their shoulder, what it probably meant was that this thing was trying to catch up with them and was unsuccessful in doing so, thank God. This next video is from Nightmare Fuel, who reposted a video of basically a bunch of policemen seemingly confronting a demonic entity. This demonic entity is called Kalmica, and you can hear like this thing, this person growling throughout the clip. This is one of the weirdest videos I've ever put in one of these compilations, so just watch for yourself. <laughs> The police eventually go outside to call out to this entity and they're going to use a strobe light. So I wanted to pop in here really fast and warn you of those strobe lights and I will have the timestamp under the video for whenever it ends. But here's the clip of when they go outside to go call her. The police weirdly like try to call out to this demon, speak kindly to her in order to convince her to come to them, in order to convince her to come out. I'm not gonna lie to you, I don't really know what this video was. I don't know if it was paranormal. Like, it's, it's so, so bizarre that I don't even have a way to summarize it or tell you how I feel about it or just anything. I just, I was confused and I wanted to share it with you, okay? We've almost talked about 50 TikToks at this point. Forgive me if a few are a little on the bizarre side, but this one is definitely the weirdest. So then I have a video from one of my favorite TikTok creators, Morg, and Morg lives in the notoriously haunted and spiritual region of the Appalachian Mountains. And Morg was told, seriously, one of the scariest stories I've ever ever heard by someone who kind of lives in her area. And that person, that friend, told Morg that she could share the story. Morg's friend spent a day walking in the woods with her husband and their baby. 
and they encountered something that will genuinely scare you. My best friend and her family came face to face with one of the things that lurks in the woods of Appalachia yesterday. And she told me the story and told me that I could tell you guys the story. Buckle up, because it's horrifying. So yesterday, they decided to go on a hike, super normal. They start hearing this bird, which is normal, they're in the woods, but something was just a bit off. And eventually, she pieced it together and was like, this sounds like someone's mimicking a bird. And then it clicked. So she was like, we have to get out of here, let's go. And then the bird noises got super loud and very, very close. Like covered several feet in a matter of seconds close. Which typically when you're talking about these things means that it's farther away, but it didn't this time. So they hear it right there, they're already back at their car and they're getting the baby in the car seat. She tells her fiance not to look, but he is already looking. And here's what he said he saw. This figure was very tall, probably around eight feet. Completely black, except for the face, which was very pale, and he couldn't see the eyes. Which is what several people have said these things look like if they're not mimicking a deer or a tree or anything else. That's just what they look like. They get in the truck, lock the doors, and this thing comes charging at them. Sprinting. They speed off in their car, which you're not supposed to do, but you really don't know how you're going to handle that situation until you're in it, and most people are going to run, even if you know the rules. I ran. So they try to keep their eyes off the rear view, but this thing is just charging at them, a weird posture, arms flailing everywhere, and they're back where they should be in record time. She said the bird noises were super upsetting to her baby, and he would cry, What are you doing? She's like, this is terrifying, please stop. She said the noises would make him cry louder and louder each time, and he was just petrified, which he doesn't get around birds. This is one of the scariest stories that I've ever heard, and the fact that it happened to someone so close to me is just terrifying. I was like, girl, you guys gotta stay out of the woods for like, ever now. Basically, this thing was like mimicking the sounds and visuals of the forest around them until it just wasn't anymore. And seriously, this story gave me chills down to the bone. If I ever experienced something like that, I don't know how I would ever begin to even say it out loud. Seriously, I'd have to change zip codes, so props to those people because what the heck. Next up is a video from the user Cactus Tate, who we have talked about in a previous video. Tate's daughter has said some kind of crazy and creepy things, and we have talked about them here on the haunted side of TikTok. One night in particular, Tate's daughter has complained to her mother about a monster under the bed. I didn't get a whole lot of sleep last night. No, I didn't. Because my daughter woke up in the middle of the night, looked me dead in the eyeball and said, Mommy, I'm afraid of what's under the bed. And in my head, I was thinking, that's really fucking creepy. I too am now afraid of what's under the bed. That's not what I said though. No, what I said was, honey, there's nothing under the bed. Just go back to sleep. Did I believe that? No. Actually, I'm pretty sure there was something under the bed, but I lied to her for her comfort. And then she asked me to check under the bed. And in my head, I was like, ain't no way am I getting out of bed right now to check under it. Instead, I reassured her that there was nothing under the bed and I told her to go back to sleep. And she tried for a minute. Her eyes fluttered. They, they like a little bit. And then they popped right open again. And she was looking at the TV, the TV that was turned off in our dark room. And she goes, mommy, who's that on the TV? And in my head, I'm thinking, dog, I don't know. You tell me. You're the one seeing dead people. Who the f is that on the TV? Because I don't see it, but I'm terrified. I don't say that. No, instead I say, honey, the TV's turned off. There's no one on the TV. Just go back to sleep. And she falls back asleep eventually. You know who doesn't? Me, because I'm afraid of what's under the bed now. And I'm wondering who the that was on my TV. The fact that this kid went from telling her mom there was like something under the bed to telling her there was something on a dark TV screen just, again, chills all over my body. And this is why I'm not ready to have kids yet because I would not have an appropriate response when something like this happens. The appropriate response is, oh, don't worry, mommy can take that monster, I'll, I'll beat its butt. No, no, that wouldn't be my response, kids. I would be telling my child to get under the bed with me and that's how I know I'm not ready. All jokes aside, this is not the first time that Tate's daughter has experienced paranormal things in this house which makes me wonder what she saw that night. TikTok user The Bonehead posted a video, and when I initially saw this, it only had a couple thousand likes. I don't think it ever really blew up, but I had a few tags in it, which I was surprised by because, you know, usually if multiple people tag me in something, it's like a viral video. But 
This one was interesting. It starts off with somebody filming from their staircase, like filming through the slats on their staircase. And you hear a few notes play as though somebody or something is tampering with an instrument in another room. And then as the clip goes on, you hear what sounds as if it's a full song start to play. Okay, so maybe I exaggerated like a little bit by calling it a full song. It's it's just like a bunch of notes smashed together. What this most likely is, is that the keyboard has been damaged in some way because it's the same notes playing over and over again. I'm gonna show my inner Swifty here, but this recently happened on Taylor Swift's Eras tour. Her keyboard was out in the rain during one show. She was caught in the rain pretty badly during one of her sets and it damaged the keyboard and it was like playing notes by itself in the middle of her set. So that's not that uncommon. And if it's not malfunctioning, we simply have a master pianist on our hands in the form of a ghost. TikTok user Mama Chaos took her kiddos on a little nature walk and they encountered something in the trees that was not your run-of-the-mill forest woodland creature. I took my kids to the park the other day. We were frolicking through the woods, having a grand old time talking to trees. We were having a full on Drew Barrymore moment. All of a sudden, I hear something rustling in the leaves above me. I got excited thinking that I was going to see a squirrel or some chipmunks or anything of the matter. I was not expecting a 10-year-old boy. He was climbing up the branches until we made eye contact and then he just froze. He kept eye contact with me, one arm up, one arm down, getting ready to go up higher, but he wasn't moving a muscle. We stared at each other for a good 15 seconds before I finally found my voice and I was like, do you need help? Nothing, not even the slightest eye movement out of this kid. So I was like, maybe he didn't hear me. Let me just yell a little louder. I was like, do you need assistance? This kid's pulling a Walt Disney. He's frozen solid. By this point, it's been a solid minute. And little Damien hasn't broken eye contact. He hasn't even blinked. But I did notice a grin that wasn't there before. So I grabbed my kids and I ran out of there. I've seen enough Stephen King movies to know what the hell's going to happen next. And you know what? On the way to the car, through the woods, through the park, I didn't see a single parent. Now listen, I know damn well that I could take a 10-year-old boy in a fight, but that wasn't a boy. I don't even think that was a human. After I shoved my kids into the car and packed them in like sardines, we were heading home and my four-year-old daughter in the back seat goes, Mommy, why were you so scared of Xavier? Excuse me? You know that boy? Who is he? I don't know him. You don't go to school. If I don't know him, you sure as hell shouldn't know him. Why do you know this boy? I never got an answer. All she did was start laughing maniacally in the back seat, which really creeped me out. I was this close to calling a priest. The fact that later her kid knew the name of that little boy, despite there not being any parents around, despite this little kid not ever saying anything back to them, like, but still her kid knows about him despite their age difference and he's like not someone that this child would know from school, like, how, how? How? We're down to our last two TikToks. If you have made it to this point in the video, kudos to freaking you. I've had to film this video over the span of two nights with multiple camera batteries and mics and stuff, so I appreciate you being here. And if you haven't already liked the video, now is a great time to do it, just to let me know that you like longer videos like this. So up next is a video from the user Carissa Did It, who recently lost her father. Something I went through as well, and I know it's a really, really, really hard thing to go through losing your parent. However, Carissa is having these experiences with him almost like he's not even gone. The radio in her father's camper keeps turning on all by itself. Okay, so recently my dad passed and the radio in his camper has been turning on, so I'm going to document the songs that uh, randomly turn on in there. Yesterday it was Isn't She Lovely, and today it is... I can't play you this music due to copyright, but the lyrics are so we're down below. And as it plays, you can see part of Carissa's hair almost blowing in the wind as if something has brushed past her. And our very last video comes from Um Sam, I guess, who we have talked about in previous entries into the haunted side of TikTok. Sam is just visiting a friend when suddenly they can hear what sounds like knocking outside of their friend's door. The problem with that is that the knocking is coming from a balcony and their friend very clearly lives multiple stories in the air, and there's no reason someone should be knocking out there. So I decided to visit my best friend after work today, and I got here before they did, 
and there's literally i walked in here and like something started knocking on the back door back there you can hear it stop now okay so you might think it might be the neighbor or something or like a dog or something at the door but look 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 we're on the second floor and there's like literally nobody there's like nobody here and I'm by myself And listen, after this, everyone in the comments was screaming at Sam for opening the door, for letting whatever this is into their friend's apartment. But seriously, Sam has had the craziest paranormal experiences in broad freaking daylight multiple times. So I don't even blame them. Like, why are these ghosts so bold that they do not feel they need to wait until the darkness of night to do their bidding? Why are they tormenting this person in broad daylight? And there you have it, my beautiful, wonderful friends. 50 paranormal TikToks from the haunted side of TikTok. Thank you so much for sticking around for this whole video. I wanted to try a longer video and originally this was going to go up for my birthday but I had some things happen that sort of pushed it off and then I had more things happen that pushed it off even more. So I'm very happy this is finally up. You finally watched it. Listen, I cannot promise you that every single haunted side of TikTok will ever be this big again, but it was really fun to do a mega video. It was kind of fun to do a video that took me like multiple sessions to film. It feels very fulfilling at the end of it. And I'm sure I'll feel even better once it's finally live. Oh no, I have to edit this whole thing. Before we go, I want to say a big thank you to my subscribers who are also members of this channel. If you want to join the channel memberships and get extra members exclusive perks, including members only videos, polls to help me decide on future video topics, and members only updates, diary entries, just so, so, so much content, you can click that little join button. It should be somewhere around the screen, probably right next to the subscribe button. We would love to have you. For now, thank you all so, so much for watching. If you did enjoy, go ahead and give me a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I love you very, very much, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.